the leaves on the ground are actually changing colors pretty quickly. And with that in mind, what was going on today? This is kind of interesting as it sort of relates to the topic yesterday, where people want to use drones to replace, I guess, people for various jobs that one wouldn't deem, I guess, desirable, for example. How about this one? Apparently, they're saying they want to use drones inside places like prisons because they can't keep staff, I guess. This one says, why Nevada wants to use drones inside prisons? Prison staffing has grown so dire that governors in Florida and West Virginia have declared state of emergencies in recent weeks. Corrections officers have become so difficult to hire and retain that robots may end up doing the job. Employers are scrambling to find teachers and healthcare professionals, but nearly all 50 states have long struggled to bring in enough security guards to oversee the nation's prison population of 1.2 million people. And in recent months, the vacancy rates have skyrocketed as officers frustrated by low pay, violent conditions, long hours, isolated work locations, and routine exposure to COVID-19 quit in droves. Would you be for drones to be used in these circumstances? Although I'd be wondering how efficient it would be if the person's really that, let's just say, I don't know, violent in a criminal way, wouldn't they be able to disarm it or disable it really easily? It says, in Nevada, prison officials imagine a security system with a central command center where one person can monitor live video feeds and the decibel levels inside housing units and outdoor areas at facilities throughout the state. This all-seeing staff member can then dispatch what previous few officers are available to an emergency situation. In the event of an escape, drones could be utilized along with tracking bracelets. The platform called Overwatch would allow prisons to fill in the blanks where we don't have enough staff. Nevada Department of Corrections Director Charles Daniels told state lawmakers when briefing them on the proposal this summer. It's a surveillance plan being pursued in Nevada after prison officials travel to a police department in Arizona that's utilizing the same approach on a smaller scale. So this is actually a thing right now? Uh, kind of interesting in terms of this system, whether or not everything would be automated with robots and all that. Something straight out of a movie too. The guy escapes, fly out the drone and so forth. And with that topic, actually, this one was actually really fascinating in regards to replacing people with, I guess, things like machines and AI and all that. You've heard of things like deep fake videos, for example, where the technology, I guess, is so realistic where you can't tell the difference. So if someone really wanted to fake someone's face and voice to make it look like they said something, they could. How about this one? This one says, actor Bruce Willis becomes first celebrity to sell rights to deep fake firm. The actor calls the technology a great opportunity to go back in time. Action movie legend Bruce Willis has just become the first Hollywood actor to sell his rights to the possibility of a digital twin to the US firm Deepcake. According to Telegraph, with the use of deep fake technology, Willis has offered his likeness to be used on screen for future projects. Following his first experience with the digital media manipulation in a commercial for Russian phone service, Megaphone, last year. So can you imagine that? Selling the license to your, I guess, face and voice and so forth where people could digitally use it for their product advertisements or possibly movies, as an example? It says deep fake technology allows the use of a person's likeness to be superimposed over another individual. Through the use of machine learning and AI, it's possible to create a visual and audio twin of someone in videos. Though the ability to recreate someone so nearly flawlessly does raise a few ethical questions, the technology has already been utilized within the Star Wars universe with Rogue One, a Star Wars story, as well as the Mandalorians Season 2. So various examples could be as well. Imagine if you have a talent or something like that who can't make it on a set at a certain time, you could have I guess someone else play the role and then later uses digitally to replace their face and all that. It's been a thing before, but right now I guess it's so realistic that it's getting to a point where you can't tell the difference. And you can see on their official site, they're really promoting it, the fact that he endorses this and it says what? I like the precision of my character. It's a great opportunity for me to go back in time. The neural network was trained on content of Die Hard and Fifth Element, so my character is similar to the images of that time. With the advent of modern technology, I could communicate, work, and participate in filming, even being on another continent. It's a brand new and interesting experience for me, and I'm grateful to our team. 
So it sounds kind of interesting in that sense. The flip side, as they mentioned, in terms of, I guess, ethical issues of security is imagine people using the tech in the future where they make a video, let's just say they want to slander or defame someone, they can make it look like, hey, that was him with a clip, and start spreading it around and all that. So how do you distinguish between what's fake and what's real in that sense when it's so similar? So that'd be kind of an interesting thing. And one little, I guess, weird random thing I read it related to that hurricane recently. And it shows here like a news reporter basically trying to protect the microphone. But it says here, NBC2 practicing safe microphone reporting during Hurricane Ian. At first I was wondering what's so special about this, but apparently if you look close into the picture, they put a condom over the microphone. I guess that's generating kind of some, I guess, conversation. And they basically say here, we practice safe hurricane reporting. Yes, it's a condom. Nothing better to waterproof a microphone. My Waterman broadcasting colleague, Claire Galer, has been fielding lots of questions. Moment of levity in his nasty storm. I don't know, I guess it's one of those things where if it works, it works. See you guys later.